As many of you probably know, or maybe you don't, I tried to live a very healthy and holistic lifestyle, but I was not always this way. I only became this way because I dealt with a very painful and disruptive autoimmune disorder, among other health issues, which forced me to re-examine my life and change the way I live. But I have since healed these issues naturally, and I'm gonna share exactly how I did it. So if you're going through something similar, which I hope you aren't, but if you are, I hope this video helps. Hello, hello, and welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Jills, and I help women step into their power and become their best selves. And today I'm talking about how I healed my body naturally. So this is just a bit more of a casual video. I um, just kind of want to share my journey in hopes that it helps someone else. Unfortunately, it seems like so many people these days suffer with autoimmune disorders or other forms of like chronic illness or chronic pain. And it's just really sad. It's not normal and it's not just this big coincidence. It's because we've distanced ourselves from our natural way of living that actually helps our body thrive. And so we need to start coming back to that. So in this video, I'm sharing my journey and what helped me. This isn't medical advice. I'm just sharing how I went from miserable to pain-free, symptom-free, and happy. So of course, this might not be the exact same for you because everybody is unique. So in my early 20s, I developed a lot of health issues and I just had an overall weak immune system. But my biggest struggle, the struggle that made me be like, okay, I need to change things up because this is not working, is I developed interstitial cystitis, which is an autoimmune disorder of the bladder. And it was just really painful, really miserable, really uncomfortable. And I was just so unhappy and so miserable. And with pretty much all autoimmune disorders, you go to the doctor and you're like, please help me, like I'm desperate. And they say, sorry, there's not much I can do. So yeah, that was my biggest struggle by far. But I also struggled with acne, terrible acid reflux, period problems, energy issues. I just had a really overall weak immune system. I was getting sick all the time. A whole a lot of random stuff and I was also just totally burnt out and I was not happy in my life like I wasn't depressed or anything but I just was not fulfilled by my life and I was just stressed out and anxious all the time and ultimately I knew that if I wanted to get better and really heal my body and get rid of my autoimmune then I had to go the natural route that's just what my intuition was telling me deep down and I mean doctors couldn't help me anyway so that was kind of my only option so I don't want to go on and on about my story and all that and honestly I don't even really like talking about it that much because it was a dark time in, in my life. I just want to talk about solutions. I want to talk about how I fixed it and how I healed my autoimmune, what I did to finally feel good again. And I know some people will say, well, you can't heal autoimmune disorders. I totally disagree. Some people might say that I'm in remission. I don't align with that term. So it is what it is. I mean, as long as I'm symptom-free, pain-free, and I'm happy. In full transparency, this took about two full years to heal, and I saw major improvements in the other areas of my health as well. So there's two different buckets that I'm going to talk about. The first is the physical, the physical things that I did to improve my health. I'm going to talk about that first. And then second is the more mental, emotional side of things. And I'm gonna talk about that second. If you have any questions, you can comment below, or if you don't want it to be public, feel free to DM me on Instagram. So let's start with the physical. The first thing that I did was I changed my diet, of course, because we all know that diet plays a huge role in our health. I mean, I was eating total crap. I grew up eating fast food. And then in my early twenties, I had no idea how to cook. I was eating just low quality takeout, low quality processed food. Kraft mac and cheese was a steak I had way too many crazy sugary desserts. You know, that was my life and it wasn't working for me. I needed to change that. There's so much food these days that you can barely even consider it food. It's just essentially empty calories, but that's not how our body thrives. Our body thrives off of real nutrition. So a little pro tip when you're trying to be healthy, don't look at the calories, look at the ingredients because that tells you all you need to know. So I made a dramatic switch in my diet because like I said, I had a lot of work to do here. So I started eating mostly organic. That was really important to me because I wanted to avoid the pesticides. I didn't want to further burden my body anymore when it was trying to heal. And I focused on eating more in line with nature. So things that either grew from the earth or lived on the earth. But also just to be straightforward, I cut out several things. Not saying that everyone needs to do this, but this is what I did. I cut out gluten and dairy, refined sugar, and also eggs, uh, which is very sad because eggs are so convenient, such a good source of protein, but I just 
couldn't do them. They made me feel terrible. They still do, so I still don't really eat them. Yeah, I realized that these foods just do not make me feel good when I was honest with myself, so I cut them out. And I was eating this way pretty much like 99% of the time in my healing phase. And then as I got better, now I follow this around like 85 to 90% of the time. But just to be clear, eating one McDonald's meal is not gonna kill you. Eating one brownie is not gonna kill you. Just like drinking one green smoothie is not gonna magically make you healthy. What's important is consistency. And I was consistent with this. Honestly, changing my diet helped me feel so much better that there's just no way that I would ever want to go back to the way I was eating before. So eating this way has naturally become really easy for me and I truly enjoy it. And when I changed my diet, I noticed improvements in my health within like two weeks. I'm not even kidding. You know how I mentioned that I had acid reflux. I struggled with it since high school. I had to take a pill for it every single day. It went away completely within two weeks of changing my diet. And it's not like my autoimmune struggles just magically disappeared after I changed my diet, but I did know that I was on the right track. Now, the second thing I did was I started learning more and more about how so many of the products we use every single day, multiple times a day, do not have the safest ingredients in them. So I started slowly switching out those products for more like clean, more non-toxic products. Things like cleaning products, makeup, hair products, laundry detergent, soap, shampoo, minimizing plastic. And there's so many good clean products out there now. There's so much larger of a market for it. So it's not as hard to find them anymore. But these things add up. Using conventional cleaning products or conventional makeup one time is not gonna do anything. But when you use these products day in and day out your entire life, it can make a really big impact and be a really big burden on your body. I'll leave a great book rec for this below in the description box. It's not like just about non-toxic products. It's about how we can limit our body's burden so that it can heal. It's this book called The Rain Barrel Effect by Dr. Stephen Cabral. And this is like just packed full of information. There's no fluff in here. It's just like, here's what's burdening your body here's how to fix it. Now, this can be overwhelming. You do not have to switch out everything overnight. Most people do this as a process. That's what I did. And it took me probably about four years to finally switch everything out for more non-toxic products. My advice is just whenever you run out of something, do a little research and find a cleaner, better, less toxic option. This makes it much more attainable and eventually everything will be switched over. If you need any good non-toxic product recs, just comment down below or DM me. I can probably help guide you in the right direction. Now, the third thing here, I saw a holistic practitioner who helped give me some high quality targeted supplements. And I do think that supplements can be really beneficial if they are in fact high quality and legit. But I think it's really useful to find someone to help you with this. So you're not just like throwing darts at a wall, not just taking random supplements willy nilly, ones that you're just picking up from the corner grocery store that don't even do anything. It's good to get some help there. And if you're gonna do supplements, you wanna make sure that they are high quality and a lot of these like practitioners out there, they know what's high quality and what's not so they can help guide you in the right direction. But when you're having health issues and you think you want to start taking some supplements to help, make sure that you are covering the basics first. You can take all the best supplements in the world and go to the best doctors, the best healers in the world. But if you're not covering the basics, then it won't really do anything. It doesn't matter. What are you eating? What are you drinking? How are you sleeping? Are you getting outside every single day and getting sunshine? Do you have a community of people you spend time with that lift you up? Are you drinking enough water? Are you moving your body? Are you giving yourself the rest that you know you need? Or are you pushing through for the sake of productivity and external achievements and validation? Do you have things that you care about in your life? Do you have a purpose or at least hobbies and things that you enjoy doing? Supplements can only do so much. I mean, they can be very helpful, but it's the consistency in the basics that makes the most impact, I think. The last thing I wanna mention when it comes to the physical side of healing, well, this is actually kind of a mix of physical and mental and emotional, but I was very just focused on living my life, being happy, making time for fun, for play, for adventures, for time outside in nature, for love for romance and stressing less, letting go of worry, focusing less on productivity and tapping into my feminine energy. If anyone is wondering why I got so into this topic of feminine energy, it's because it was a crucial part in my healing and it changed my life. The little beautiful, simple things like reading a book outside in the sunshine 
are really healing. And I know not everyone can or wants to do this, but I eventually quit my job that I didn't love so much to take some time off. And I'm very, very grateful that I got to do this. I went to the beach a lot. This was when I lived in California. I cooked a lot. I slept more. I rested more. I went for more gentle walks outside. I spent time with my dogs. I focused less on external achievements and what people wanted out of me and just focused on what I knew my body needed. I needed rest. I needed time. I needed to get my body out of this anxious fight or flight state that it was always stuck in. I needed to just sit and think and spend some good quality alone time with myself. When I finally started living my life in this way, my stress was able to go way down, my body was able to relax and start to you know, get into a state of healing. And this is where I saw the most amazing progress in my health. My physical body, my mental state, everything started to improve and feel so much better. And the thing that I learned was that humans are not meant to spend 12 hours a day sitting in a chair, staring at a computer in an office with, with fluorescent lighting and drinking eight cups of coffee just to get through the day so that they can be productive. Humans are not meant to never go outside, never cook delicious, nutritious meals, never laugh with their friends, never rest, never take breaks. That's not natural and that's not how we thrive. Honestly, for me, going to the beach, getting sunshine, resting, relaxing my nervous system was way better than any supplement I could ever take. I think sometimes when we're not feeling well, we can get stuck into this thinking of like everything, like our diet needs to be perfect. We need to be taking 20 million supplements. We need to go to acupuncture. We need to do this and that and this and that. When really your body just might want some ocean water and sunshine or some trees and fresh air or a cozy night alone on your couch watching Gilmore Girls. Your daily habits and the way you choose to live your life matters. You're meant to enjoy your life. Now let's move on to the more mental and emotional stuff. Now I know that all the physical things, all the things like diet really helped me a ton, but this is another thing that was really, really big in my healing, this part. Taking a look at the emotional aspects to my issues. I know deep down that my autoimmune issue had a lot of emotion tied to it. At the time I was dealing with certain feelings that I was not really working through or you know, trying to like move forward. I wasn't trying to fix the issues that were causing these feelings. I was kind of just like suppressing them, hoping that things would just magically get better and everything would go away. But yeah, that didn't happen. And I think that my autoimmune was partly due to these tougher emotions that I wasn't releasing and these tougher emotions and stressors that I was refusing to acknowledge and work on. Because once I did, that's when things started to again, really improve. I started to see a lot of traction and that's when my life started to expand the most and when I saw a lot of healing. So a good resource for this or a good book rack is You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay if you're interested in this topic of like emotions and healing your life. I'll link it down below for you guys. And if you're doing all the things, you know, you're eating well, getting sleep, you're seeing all the best doctors, yada, 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 and you're not making the progress that you want, or you're just not really making any progress at all, you have to recognize that there is a possibility that there is an emotional component tied to your issue. Think about what was happening in your life when all of it started. Were there any heavier emotions that you were feeling? Were you struggling with something specific or being stressed out by something specific? Because that can give you some clues. Now, something that's an absolute non-negotiable if you want to get well is you have to know with 100% belief, 100% certainty that you can in fact heal, that you can be healthy and vibrant again, that your pain and your struggles, it's not forever, it's just temporary. This was the one thing, the one thing that I actually had going for me at the start of all my health issues. You know, like I said, I had a terrible diet, I, I didn't know about health at all. I was rep repressing my emotions, all that stuff. But I did believe with 100% certainty that I could fix this. My intuition knew it. And even when you just think about it from a logical perspective, why wouldn't I be able to? I mean, the body is a self-healing machine. If you get a cut, it heals. And I didn't have this before, so why can't I make it that way again? And this belief was such a game changer. If you actually truly believe that you can heal, then there is a much, much, much higher possibility of you actually healing. And if you believe that you can never heal, if you're one of the people who believes that, you know, autoimmune disorders are there for life, you have to deal with it for the rest of your life, then there's a strong chance that you will deal with it for the rest of your life. And find people in real life or even on the internet 
who have healed what you're trying to heal. I know when I was going through this, I found a woman on YouTube who posted about her journey. She healed her interstitial cystitis naturally and she was a big expander for me. She gave me hope and if she did it, I knew that I could do it too. Find someone like that for yourself. You have to know that it's possible for you. Next is I did not identify with my disorder or problem. I chose to never really talk about it that much. Not like I was trying to repress it or anything like that, but I just didn't want to identify with it and I didn't want to focus on it. You know, what do you focus on grows. And there's a huge difference between telling everyone, oh, I have X, Y, Z and telling everyone about all your symptoms all the time versus thinking I'm experiencing symptoms of X, Y, Z but it's only temporary, it's not who I am. Because once something becomes your identity, it's so hard for your subconscious to get rid of it and your body won't wanna let it go and so your body will struggle to heal. So if you struggled with PCOS, for example, for 10 years and that's just who you see yourself as now, not Jessica, the artist and trustworthy friend, but you see yourself as Jessica, the girl with PCOS and really painful periods and acne on her face, then it's gonna be a lot harder to heal than someone who doesn't because there's a lot more subconscious shifts that you have to make. I know that this is really helpful in my healing. So try not to talk about it so much. You know, not that you can't talk about it, just don't like overly share everything just because you want some sympathy, like you cannot identify with it. Try not to think about it so much. You have to separate yourself from your symptoms and the things that you are currently experiencing. Try to focus on the things that are going right. And like I said, what you focus on grows. So don't focus on what's painful if you want less of it. Another huge thing is that I started figuring out what I liked, what I loved. I started figuring out my purpose and my path in life. And I started living my life more in alignment with that. I started figuring out who I was and what I wanted and started transforming my life in that direction because alignment is everything. Because I think following our purpose, living out our purpose, doing things that actually mean something to us is a really big deal and is really important. And I think when we live this way, everything improves, not just our physical health, but our mental health as well. And I mean, everything's related. There's just a more centered feeling within your body. And I definitely felt this. And I mean, this has been shown scientifically as well, but to be living your life in purpose, you have to know what your purpose is. And if you don't, then this is obviously really difficult to do. So that's why you should go watch this older video of mine called watch this. If you're struggling to find your purpose, it'll give you some helpful insights. So remember healing is a journey and it is never linear. This is just what worked for me. And I hope that this was helpful for you in some way. Go watch that video over there if you want to, or if not, I'll just see you next time. Bye. Shh.